morning. Today's gonna be a cool day. We've got a lot of interesting stuff came in the past week. We sold 23 cars at Barrett Jackson. We had a really good February, we sold a lot of cars and Jeeps. So I'm kind of uh, in a buying mode. So if you've got a classic car, European sports car, muscle car, or a low mileage Jeep CJ Wrangler, let me know because we are currently hunting them and buying them. I'm going to be in Scottsdale this week on Monday and Tuesday. So what we're really hunting right now is some Europe, a European sports car uh, as a project. So like a Ferrari, Lamborghini, E-Type Jag, or even a big Austin Healey. Let's check out what we got going on. We just got another red eye in. This color is Destroyer Gray, which I think is an incredible color. You know, the one I've been driving is F8 Green. I personally think the red eye is one of the best buys in the car world for the money you got a 797 horsepower car that's capable of 203 miles an hour uh, i ordered mine all mine backseat delete because i think these are basically race cars but what i really like about this car over the demon is this car is set up to drive on the street high speeds is it will be a really good track car you know the demon is basically just a quarter mile only car don't get me wrong i think it's awesome that dodge built it i've got one it is fun at the drag strip but on the street, this is the car to have. I've had a lot of people ask me questions about this platform as far as collectability. Here's my opinion. When the Hellcat came out, phenomenal car that people thought they would never build, a 707 horsepower street car. Well, they did. I think the early serial number Hellcats are gonna hold their value extremely well in the collector car market. But what I also think is they made very few manual transmission Hellcats. They are a lot of fun to drive. There are no manual transmission Demons and no manual transmission Red Eyes. So if you're thinking about putting one in your collection, look for early seal number and look for a manual transmission car if you can find it. Now, I think the Demons are going to stabilize and hold their value, but, and I cringe saying this, but I think they made too many of them. Word is they're not going to build nearly as many red eyes. I think at the tail end, when this platform is done, that the red eye is going to be the ultimate in the collector car as far as the Challenger platform. Now we've got another Hellcat motor just fresh out of the Hell Crate. As you know, I've been hunting for a super low mileage Grand Wagoneer. I wanted to start with the best of the best. I finally found it. I can't wait to show it to you next week. So we'll have it in here. We'll have the body off and we're going to put a Hellcat engine in a Grand Wagoneer, which the Grand Wagoneer is a killer truck, but they're just incredibly underpowered. And I think it's going to be a really neat build. This is a brand new 2019 JL Sport that we're about to do a 6.4 liter Hemi conversion to. So keep in tune and we'll show you some of that. It's rare to see the two-door Cherokee platforms, especially one that's this nice. This is a one family owned two-door out of the Dallas area. And it is the Laredo package. What's neat about this on the Laredo package, it has the chrome wheels that are similar looking to the CJ wheels, but they're eight inches wide. And the interior, if you look in the interior of this truck, although the seats aren't the exact same shape, it still follows the same pattern as you would see in an 84 CJ7. So it is a nutmeg interior with the stripes, just like you'd see on a Laredo. It's got the same Laredo horn button as the CJ7, the same steering wheel. Really a cool truck. Believe it or not, this has got 146,000 miles on it. Obviously the family's taking incredible care of it. And it's in, we're putting a motor in it with fuel injection so they can continue driving it. Now here's a local find that I've been chasing for a long time. This was kind of well known around the Dallas area, probably the last 20, 25 years. Uh, early on in the 80s and early 90s, this thing was a, like a street race El Camino. It started life as an SS 396. It's got a 12 bolt posi in the back, 411 gears, and a built 454. What's also really neat about this truck is it's got a Doug Nash five speed. So this was kind of an early on resto mod, if you will. Going with a Doug Nash five speed back in the day, when you had 410 gears, you could hardly drive one of these on the highway. So this thing, I saw this car for years and years and years running around town. I always want, I just finally got it bought. It's really a nice truck. Although it's no longer numbers matching 396, it's got a 454 in it. It's a highly option. Power steering, power brakes, AC, which all works. It drives really tight, rust free. And the interior is really, really nice. Bucket seats. Tack, and again, it's got the Doug Nash five speed in it, which is really cool. And it's got a little aftermarket console on it, but it was a non console truck from the factory. It's also got a tilt column in it. Next, we've got an 82 Laredo Scrambler in. Unfortunately, this is not ours. I did try to buy it when the customer brought it in. It's a local Jeep that they're still using. Um, it's in nice condition, had a rear end problem, lost a bearing, chewed up the carrier, and also chewed up the housing. So, as you know, in our wrecking yard, we've got 
every differential from 76 to 86 for CJs in stock. So we broke one down. We're going to rebuild it and get this one back on the road. Got a little bug eye front end back here hiding out. So we found another bug eye Sprite, which we commonly buy. Um, it's in the back. They're washing it. We'll have it back together next week. And as you know, I'm a huge fan of Fox bodies. And this one I really, really like. Mustang started in 64 and a half. Some people will say 65. I think most enthusiasts would say it's 64 and a half. This is the 20th anniversary car, therefore they call it an 84 and a half. This was the only Fox body Mustang to carry the GT350 name, which is really cool. Now there were three drivetrains offering these cars in two body styles. You either got the hatchback or you got the convertible. Now the drivetrains, you could get the four cylinder turbo, you get 302, fuel injected that came with an automatic or in my opinion the most desirable way to get this car is going to be the 302 HO carbureted with a five speed which is what this is now when I chase these cars I always look for miles this is a one owner car original window sticker books records original tires with 4,600 actual miles this car has never been detailed I'm not even sure if it's been serviced or not which we will detail and service it here looks and smells as new. But here's what's cool. 1984, they basically, this, this engine looks similar or as similar as you're going to get on a late model Fox body to a Shelby. Again, this has not been cleaned. But when you see HO, high output 4V, which means it's a four barrel, then if you open the hood on an automatic, it's going to say HO EFI for fuel injection. So we are still hunting super low mileage, rare Fox body Mustangs. Next, we've got a 63 356 Porsche. Now, I'm going to have to give a shout out and a big thanks to Russell J. Holmes of Garage Rehab, who's also now on Fast and Loud and Richard Rawlings. They found this car when they were out hunting. I wasn't with them. They called me up, sent me some pictures, said, absolutely, I'll take it. This car had been sitting in a warehouse for about 10 years. It has a transmission problem, which we will address, but a really nice numbers matching car. Uh, we've got big Chris on our staff, so he's really good at researching vehicles. On these cars, on the 356 Porsches and 911s for that matter, the numbers actually don't match the VIN number. You can look up and see if your engine's in a series that's close to the car and assume it's numbers matching, but you can't prove it's numbers matching unless you have the Cardex. What's nice is this car has the Cardex. It is a numbers matching engine, numbers matching color scheme in Carmine Red, so a really cool find. Again, we're always chasing the 356s and 911s. Here we have, it's hard to tell, but as an original paint, Texas 81 Scrambler. The, it is a Renegade Scrambler. The stripes are just burnt clean off of it. We're servicing it, getting it running and driving, and we'll either restore that for a customer or sell it as is. And here's the Charcoal Metallic 85. Again, in 1985, they only made 2015 Scramblers. And it was the only year that on the hood, if it was a Renegade Scrambler, it actually said Renegade. If it was a Laredo Scrambler, it said Laredo. And then, of course, the base one says Scrambler. All prior years, 81 to 84, all just said Scrambler on the hood. So we're just about done with the cosmetic restoration on this. We'll get the flares on it, the rocker moldings, complete the stripe kit, and build the doors. And this one should be back with the customer soon. So there you have it, a huge eclectic group of cars that came in this week. Thanks for watching. Please like, tag, share, and follow. Remember, I'll be in Scottsdale Monday, Tuesday hunting cars. I'm really looking for European sports cars. Have a great day.